Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and welcome to the sixth part of my guide how to set up INAV on the 5-inch quad GPS and magnetometer and barometer equipped 5-inch quadcopter. But some of the advices I give over here apply to everything, really every other case. Today, today a failsafe. Today a failsafe, failsafe which really is the most important safety measure uh, you can take and failsafe always has to be configured because without the failsafe you can well lose your quad, hurt someone or just hurt yourself and this will definitely not be a very pleasant um, experience. I already did the video about the failsafe and the FRSKY settings for the failsafe a few months ago, so link to that part is in the video description. Today let's only take a short glance at the settings you should choose when flying quadcopter with INAV. First of all, do not modify anything if you do not understand, really, really deeply understand the meaning of what you are setting. First of all, do not modify those. If you have a standard radio and you are connecting your radio to the flight controller with the S-Bus, this is even not very much valid. This is valid only when using the PPM or PWM settings, really the legacy stuff. Leave it as it is. Do not play with that. It makes no sense. Also in the settings, leave the kill switch as it is and leave the guard time after signal loss. Yes, we want to wait a half a second before activating the failsafe. It's not by coincidence that this is really a five second threshold. Great, fantastic. And the last st step, we have the some, let's say, procedures of what INAV will try to do when the failsafe event will happen. And now, by default, it's set to land. And what land is? This is very important. In the land mode, the copter is not really trying to um, do anything fancy. It just lowers the throttle, keeps the sticks in the center and tries to, let's say, descend to the ground. It's not safe. It's not very safe, it's not really like um, something what you should be using in INAV, but it's a default because it works more or less with everything. So, throttle used uh, while landing, of course, it's a throttle value that will be used during the landing and the time in seconds after which the INAV will disarm the motors after it thought it landed. Because landing can happen if you don't have bar or GPS, magnetometer, anything. It just cuts the throttle to the given value and 20 seconds later disarm the craft. So, of course, this is like... If you really want to use land, then yeah, okay, you can use land, but I really advise against using land instead. If you have a racer, 5-inch racer, use drop. This is the fault what, for example, Betaflight is doing. If you have fail safe, then disarm the drone and let it fall to the ground because it's really the safe. If, of course, you have something bigger like the 7-inch or 10-inch GPS here and there, then maybe drop is not really the best idea. And this is when you can choose the RTH. What will happen if you will enter the face if you will lose the radio signal, the INAV will try to execute return to home and then land your copter. Of course, in the process, if the signal will be recovered and you will move the sticks, you will still regain control of your quad. But if you do not do anything, let's just leave the sticks uh, centered like they, they were during the phase F, it will continue. RTH. RTH is really a good option if you have magnetometer and GPS and the barometer. Of course, in our case, we have it, so I will set it to RTH. And the last one, uh, do nothing. Do nothing means that really it does nothing. It will continue. After failsafe, happened, it will just continue. Of course, it will detect that it's a failsafe and there is no radio, but it will not try to land, uh, drop or RTH. It will just continue. Even when you are doing emissions, it will try to continue the mission. 
Don't use it if you are not prepared to face the consequences of losing your craft. You really have to be sure that do nothing is what you want to do. You want to use RTH when you have GPS, barrow and magnetometer, or you want to use drop if you don't have either GPS or barrow or magnetometer. This is for the racers, freestylers and stuff like that. Drones and RTH is every time when you do have a full GPS capabilities in your drone. Um, okay. This was the relatively short video. I think it's good because some of my videos are getting ridiculously long. So it's a nice change. And that's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.